March 8, 1942. 200 Royal Air Force bombers roll from British airfields toward the Ruhr Valley. In the lead Wellington of No. 115 Squadron from RAF Watton, pilot officer Jack Foster checks an instrument that will change the war. The green glow of the G receiver shows precise navigation lines stretching 350 miles into enemy territory. For the first time in this conflict, British bombers know exactly where they are. The target is Essen, heart of German industrial might. Foster's navigator watches the hyperbolic curves on his cathode ray display, reading time delays between synchronized radio pulses transmitted from stations across southern England. The system, developed by Robert Dippy at the Telecommunications Research Establishment in Swanage, measures signal arrival times to the nearest microsecond. What began as a simple blind landing aid has evolved into a revolutionary long-range navigation system. Below, in the German industrial heartland, Freya radar operators at Himmelbet Station Dortmund track the approaching formation. The familiar pattern of individual bombers wandering across their screens has changed. These aircraft fly in precise formation, following identical flight paths with mathematical precision. Something fundamental has shifted in British bombing doctrine. The Wellington's bomb bay doors open over Essen. Foster later reports to debriefing officers. Targets were found and bombed as never before, though the primary objective, the massive Krupp armaments complex, escapes major damage, bombs strike the southern districts of the city with unprecedented accuracy. For the first time, British navigators have delivered their aircraft to within a few hundred meters of intended targets at ranges previously thought impossible. Five nights later, March 13, 1942, Cologne becomes the stage for the first completely successful G-led attack. RAF Bomber Command Pathfinder crews illuminate the ancient cathedral city with flares and incendiaries. The bombing concentration astounds both attackers and defenders. Post-mission analysis reveals this raid achieved five times the effectiveness of earlier attacks on the same target. In Berlin, the implications ripple through German command structures. Engineer Colonel Schwenk, chief intelligence officer responsible for analyzing new British capabilities, convenes emergency meetings. Systematic interrogation of captured RAF personnel reveals disturbing intelligence gaps. German prisoner of war camps echo with questions about mysterious J-beams that British air crews refuse to discuss in detail. The breakthrough moment arrives May 30, 1942. Operation Millennium unfolds as 1,047 RAF bombers prepare for the largest single raid in aviation history. The force comprises 602 Vickers Wellingtons, 131 Hanley Page Halifaxes, 88 Short Stirlings, 79 Hanley Page Hamptons, 73 Avro Lancasters, 46 Avro Manchesters, and 28 Armstrong Whitworth Whitleys. Air Chief Marshal Arthur Harris has gambled everything on this demonstration. Using every available aircraft, including training units with partially qualified crews, Bomber Command aims to prove that concentrated precision attacks can achieve strategic objectives. The target remains Cologne, Germany's third largest city. At Luftwaffe night fighter control centers across western Germany, radar operators witness something unprecedented. The bomber stream appears as a concentrated river of contacts flowing through a single Himmelbett defensive box. Each box, designed to handle individual aircraft with two Würzburg radars and assigned night fighters, faces hundreds of targets simultaneously. General Joseph Kamhuber, architect of Germany's night fighter defense system, watches his carefully constructed barrier collapse. The Kamhuber line, stretching from Denmark to central France in overlapping defensive cells, becomes obsolete in 90 minutes. Only 25 German night fighters manage to engage the massive formation. The defensive mathematics have shifted catastrophically in Britain's favor. Over Cologne, 1,047 bombers drop 1,455 tons of high-explosive and incendiary bombs in precisely 90 minutes. The G-navigation system enables each aircraft to follow identical approach and departure routes, concentrating the entire force into a devastating bombardment window that overwhelms German defenses. Flying officer Leslie Manser, piloting Avro Manchester L7301, represents the human cost of this tactical revolution. When searchlights and flak damage his aircraft over the target, 
Mansur maintains course long enough for his crew to abandon the aircraft safely. His posthumous Victoria Cross recognizes not just individual heroism, but the courage required to execute these new precision tactics. On the ground in Cologne, civilian authorities struggle to comprehend the scale of destruction. 2,500 separate fires ignite across the city. 13,000 buildings suffer destruction, including over 2,500 industrial and commercial structures. The German Fire Brigade classifies 1,700 blazes as large fires remarkably. Fewer than 500 civilians die, testament to effective air raid shelters, but 45,000 residents lose their homes. The psychological impact proves equally devastating. Between 135,000 and 150,000 residents flee Cologne in the raid's aftermath, abandoning nearly one quarter of the city's 700,000 population. The Cologne newspaper Westdeutscher Biobacter describes the nightmare of Sunday, weighing heavily on the remaining population. RAF losses total 41 aircraft, a 3.9% casualty rate deemed acceptable for such massive operations. Crucially, the heaviest losses occur among the first bomber waves, crewed by experienced operational personnel. Training aircraft and pupil crews suffer proportionally lower casualties indicating German defenses became progressively overwhelmed as the raid continued. In Berlin, the intelligence implications demand immediate attention. On May 26, 1942, engineer Colonel Schwenk presents his findings to a high-level conference. Systematic prisoner interrogations have revealed that British forces developed operational copies of German Nikobai navigation systems by August or September 1941. The revelation stuns German technical intelligence. British scientists reversed-engineered captured German beam riding equipment, then surpassed the original design. Schwenk's report identifies the critical German failure. As a result of extensive use by us of the Nikobine and X and Y Jarat systems, these devices fell into British hands. This occurred because we did not fit demolition charges German bomber crews, confident in their technical superiority, failed to destroy sensitive navigation equipment when shot down over Britain. General Wolfgang Martini, Director General of Air Signals for the Luftwaffe, receives Schwenk's intelligence with growing alarm. A career signals officer who championed radar development within the German military, Martini immediately recognizes the strategic implications. The British have not merely copied German technology, they have fundamentally reimagined precision navigation. Martini calls an urgent conference on jamming countermeasures against the British G-System. The timeline reveals German intelligence failures. Large-scale British G operations began March 8, 1942. Effective German jamming equipment was not even designed until more than two months afterward. British scientists had anticipated German countermeasures and prepared frequency agile receivers capable of switching between 20 to 30, 40 to 50, 50 to 70, and 70 to 90 megahertz bands. At Worth Maitrevers in Dorset, Robert Dippy watches his creation exceed every design specification. The telecommunications research establishment, evacuated from its exposed coastal location to Malvern College in the Worcestershire Hills, had developed G as a short-range blind landing system in October 1937. During testing, the range proved far better than expected, 350 miles instead of the predicted 100 miles. 60,000 G-sets roll from British factories during the war years, equipping Royal Air Force, United States Army Air Forces, and Royal Navy aircraft. The production order placed August 18, 1941, with Dynatron and Kosser companies, represents Britain's commitment to precision navigation warfare. Dr. R. V. Jones of Air Scientific Intelligence coordinates an elaborate deception campaign to protect G's operational security. Fake J-beam transmissions confuse German listening posts attempting to analyze British navigation methods. British prisoners in German camps receive training to misdirect interrogations about navigation aids. The deception proves so effective that German intelligence continues investigating fictitious J-beams months after G becomes operational. The first serious German jamming appears August 4, 1942, during a raid on Essen. Interference intensifies as bombers approach their target, rendering G signals unusable within 10 to 20 miles of the objective. However, the southern G chain, unknown to German intelligence, 
continues providing navigation fixes. On December 3, 1942, British navigators achieve a navigation fix over Turin, Italy, at a range of 730 miles, the operational record for G-accuracy. German night fighter pilots experience the tactical revolution firsthand. Hauptmann Wolfgang Falk, a pioneering night fighter ace, reports the fundamental change in British bomber behavior. Previous raids scattered individual aircraft across multiple defensive sectors, allowing German controllers to vector single fighters against isolated targets. The new concentrated streams overwhelm defensive coordination. Messerschmitt Bf 110 and Junkers Ju 88 night fighters, equipped with primitive Liechtenstein B C radar sets from spring 1942, face an impossible tactical situation. Each Himmelbet control center can direct only one fighter interception at a time. Against streams of hundreds of aircraft, the mathematical advantage shifts decisively toward the attackers. Luftwaffe radar operators describe the transformation in British tactics. Freya early warning radars with 100-kilometer range detect approaching formations but cannot provide precision tracking. Würzburg gun-laying radars offer 40-kilometer precision but cover limited sectors. The British bomber streams exploit gaps between radar coverage zones, following identical navigation routes that minimize exposure to defensive fire. The Kamhuber Line, Germany's primary night defense system, consisted of individual defensive boxes stretching from Denmark to central France. Each box measured approximately 32 kilometers north-south by 20 kilometers east-west, equipped with Freya radar, searchlights, and assigned night fighters. The system proved devastatingly effective against individual bombers wandering across multiple sectors. Concentrated streams following precise navigation routes rendered the entire defensive concept obsolete. At Luftwaffe headquarters, Hermann Göring dismisses General Martini's warnings about British navigation advances. The Reich Marshal, increasingly detached from tactical realities, considers radar specialists prone to exaggerating their equipment's importance. It was the same with all specialists, Goring tells subordinates. They exaggerate the importance of whatever they are working on. This dismissive attitude costs Germany crucial months in developing countermeasures. British Bomber Command had anticipated three months of operational effectiveness before German jamming appeared. In reality, effective interference took nearly five months to develop, providing Britain extended operational advantage during the crucial period of tactical development. The strategic implications extend beyond individual raids. RAF Bomber Command adopts area bombing as official policy during 1942, selecting 60 German cities within G range for systematic destruction using 1,600 to 1,800 tons of bombs per city. The precision navigation capability transforms strategic bombing from ineffective harassment into systematic industrial warfare. United States Army Air Forces entering the European theater during 1942, immediately recognizes G's tactical value. American bomber crews train on British navigation systems, integrating precision approach techniques with daylight formation tactics. The combined British-American bombing offensive achieves unprecedented coordination through shared navigation technology. For German civilians, the transformation means escalating devastation. Earlier British raids scattered bombs across wide areas, causing limited damage to specific targets. G-guided attacks concentrate destruction within precise target zones, maximizing industrial damage while overwhelming civil defense capabilities. The Battle of the Ruhr, beginning March 1943, demonstrates G's tactical maturity. RAF Bomber Command systematically attacks 26 targets across Germany's industrial heartland, achieving consistent accuracy despite weather conditions and defensive countermeasures. The sustained campaign proves precision navigation enables strategic bombing effectiveness impossible with dead reckoning methods. German technical intelligence, analyzing captured G equipment throughout 1942, struggles to comprehend the system's elegance. Unlike German beam riding navigation requiring aircraft to follow predetermined courses, G provides omnidirectional position fixing. Bombers can approach targets from any direction while maintaining navigation accuracy. The tactical flexibility revolutionizes mission planning. Production statistics reveal the scale of British commitment to precision navigation. B-52 
beyond the 60,000 G-sets manufactured during the war. Supporting infrastructure includes ground transmitter stations, mobile units for continental operations, and specialized training facilities. The investment represents a fundamental shift in British strategic thinking. By war's end, G technology evolves into post war civilian navigation systems. The hyperbolic navigation principles developed for wartime bombing operations become the foundation for peaceful air and maritime navigation. Lauren, developed by American engineers using G principles, provides navigation services for decades. The human cost of this technological revolution extends beyond aircrew casualties. German night fighter pilots, initially successful against individual bombers using searchlight and radar coordination, face impossible odds against concentrated streams. Many experienced pilots die attempting to intercept massed formations using tactics designed for single aircraft encounters. For RAF aircrew, G represents survival as much as tactical advantage. Pre-G navigation relied on dead reckoning, celestial observation, and radio direction finding, methods prone to catastrophic errors over enemy territory. The 1.2% loss rate for G-equipped aircraft compared to 3.5% for unequipped aircraft demonstrates the system's life-saving impact. The strategic bombing debate, contentious throughout the war and afterward, centers on G's tactical implications. Critics argue that precision navigation enabled indiscriminate area bombing of civilian targets. Supporters contend that accurate navigation allowed effective attacks on legitimate military objectives, shortening the war and reducing overall casualties. Engineer Colonel Schwenk's intelligence analysis proves prophetic. In his May 26, 1942, report, he warns German leadership that British navigation advances threaten the fundamental assumptions of defensive strategy. The systematic interrogation of prisoners, technical analysis of captured equipment, and signals intelligence monitoring reveal a coordinated British effort to revolutionize bombing accuracy. General Martini's attempts to develop countermeasures face institutional resistance within the Luftwaffe hierarchy. His signals intelligence organizations, responsible for identifying and analyzing British technical advances, lack the authority to implement tactical changes. The disconnect between intelligence analysis and operational response costs Germany valuable time in adapting defensive strategies. The G navigation system, initially designed by Robert Dippy for routine blind landings at British airfields, ultimately transforms strategic warfare. The progression from simple landing aid to revolutionary navigation system illustrates how wartime necessity accelerates technological development. Britain's investment in scientific research and development, coordinated through establishments like TRE at Swanage, produces tactical advantages that prove decisive in aerial warfare. German reaction to British navigation advances reveals fundamental weaknesses in their technological intelligence system. Despite extensive signals monitoring capabilities and systematic prisoner interrogation programs, German analysts fail to anticipate the scale and speed of British navigation improvements. The seven-month delay in recognizing G's existence, combined with additional months required to develop effective countermeasures, provides Britain with crucial tactical advantages during the decisive phase of the strategic bombing campaign. The story of G exemplifies how seemingly minor technological advances can reshape entire military strategies. A navigation system designed for improved landing safety becomes the foundation for precision strategic bombing, fundamentally altering the course of World War II. From the first tentative raids over Essen to the thousand bomber streams over Cologne, British science transforms strategic warfare through mathematical precision and engineering excellence.